Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker, and it is great to be able to make a contribution today uh, about the Brighton and Seacliff Yacht Club, a great organisation, a great community organisation, which I'm very fortunate to represent because it's found within the boundaries of my electorate. But it is a club which has a reach much further uh, than the local community in which it is located. Uh, and it is a club with a varied, uh, diverse and exceptionally interesting history. It was great to head down to the club on the weekend, on Sunday afternoon, uh, to be part of the launch of their uh, anthology, which looks at the last 100 years of the club. The club has just turned 100 years old, and it's amazing for a club to really last uh, 10 years in this day and age, never mind last for a whole century. And so they published uh, Gold and Black, a great uh, a book which covers that 100 years, goes through the stories uh, and the um, many characters who have made up uh, this club's uh, phenomenal history. Uh, I was joined at the event by the Mayor of the City of Holdfast Bay, Amanda Wilson. Uh, I was joined by Federal uh, Member Nicole Flint uh, and actually uh, the uh, Minister for uh, Innovation and, and Skills, uh, David Pisoni, was there as well because his uh, father-in-law had actually contributed towards writing Gold on Black and, uh, and it was great to catch up with him. Uh, uh, Jim Blake is his name as well. Uh, it's a club which has uh, got a, a really rich history, and I, I know this is, a, uh, this is knowledge which is uh, shared by my parliamentary colleague, Corey Wingard, who is in his role as uh, Minister uh, for Sport, but also as someone with a neighbouring electorate, uh, knows this club inside out as well. Uh, the club has uh, just turned 100, as I mentioned, and uh, what a way to celebrate that 100th birthday uh, than to have the first female Commodore in its 100 years of history. It was great last year, in 2019, uh, to be able to go along to the season opening. I was actually accompanied by the Premier uh, on that day, uh, when Lisa Brock became the first female Commodore uh, to take on that position, and she's bringing great leadership and enthusiasm uh, to that position. Uh, the club really has been uh, an anchor point within our community for, for the last century. Uh, it's a club which has um, had rich characters make up uh, its, uh, its membership. Uh, I think of the Hardy family, uh, and the, the Higgins family, and the, the Greenhouse, and, and a whole range of uh, significant people within our community. Uh, Pitt Pearson, a um, um, uh, a legend in the sailing world in South Australia with an international reputation as well, and, uh, and Bruce Noble, local Seacliff resident who was a previous Commodore and who has quietly served uh, that club with uh, diligence and respect uh, for many years. Uh, they were all there uh, on, um, uh, on Sunday afternoon. It was great to catch up with uh, people like Nancy Higgins and other members of the Higgins family, uh, and also uh, to see Margaret Greenhalf uh, and Barbara Hardy, AO, that great environmentalist, another Seacliff resident, uh, a couple of people I mentioned there uh, in their 90s who are still significant members of the club. Uh, the book itself, Gold on Black, uh, named so because of the iconic uh, colours of the Brighton and Seacliff Yacht Club, uh, goes through this 100 years his of, of great history. And interestingly, it's a book of two parts because uh, the updated edition uh, actually builds on part one, which was written by George Doughty and published in 1984, covering the first 70 or so years of the club's history, actually published the, the year I was born, Deputy Speaker. But it has now uh, been updated. Uh, to include a whole range of stories from the 80s, the 90s and the noughties to present day, uh, covering uh, some of the, the more recent uh, trials, uh, tribulations, uh, challenges and, and many positive things that have happened to the club. It doesn't shy away from the, challenge, the challenges that the club has faced, um, both financial terms and membership terms. But as we get to the end of the book, it really positively celebrates the growth in membership, particularly among the juniors. The book has been put together by Peter Gold, Jim Blake, Phil Scapins and John Gratton, long-standing members and more recent member Rex Hunter. I look forward to presenting a copy of this book to the Parliamentary Library later this afternoon.